again, friends, and welcome back to my channel. My name's Amy, and I'm glad you decided to join me for this book, this um, chapter of the book that I'm going to be reading to you that I wrote. Today is going to be chapter 17. I just realized when I was making um, the chapter 18 video that I did not um, record myself reading chapter 17, and I do really apologize for that. I don't know how that happened, but it did. So we are just going to move forward, and I am going to read to you chapter 17. So sit back, uh, grab your book, grab uh, your favorite drink, and let's begin. Chapter 17. Here we go. The wizard's name was Starlin. He had a lengthy blonde beard that came almost to the ground. Starlin wore a great gray robes with black loops and whorls stitched as decorations. He and Castilia greeted each other. Leon made a short bow to show respect to the old man before him. My, what a good man you turned out to be. You look just like your twin. Starlin said at last while shaking Leon's hand warmly. Leon smiled back politely. Thank you, wizard. Hunter, please call me Starlin, or Star for short. Wizard makes me feel so old. St Leon glanced at Starlin's abode. Castilia crossed her arms. Star, you are old. 800 is old. Star just shook his head and began piling books on the table. He waved them over. You both will stay here for the night. In the morning, I need to go to a meeting with the other counselors. Castilia, the other day the head counselor invited Rifa to dine with us, and I assume take her to bed with him. Castilia tensed up at the name Rifa. Are you sure? she asked, almost in disbelief. Almost certain. Starlin replied without hesitation. Leon cut in for a minute. Wait a second. Do you mean Queen Rifa of the witches? The other two looked at him, at him, clearly taken off guard that Leon had heard of, of the woman. You know of her? Starlin asked, now giving Leon his full attention. Leon fiddled with the hilt of his sword. Er, well, <clears throat> I know that witches and wizards went to war, and she and a wizard named Lincoln were the mightiest of their race. Starlin was impressed. Very good indeed, boy. Now, may I see the orb you carry? Leon hesitated, but caught Castilia give a short nod that it was okay. Leon hurriedly took it out of its container and gently handed it to the wizard. My, I haven't seen this in ages, the water orb. Now tell me, how are you, how have you been feeling? Starlin inquired as he held the orb and examined it. Leon thought for a bit and moved to the hearth where the fire was burning. The same, I suppose. Although this may sound odd, I haven't been able to shake this feeling of always being very warm, even away from any heat sources. Both Starlin and Castilia remained quiet for a while while Leon spoke. Leon now moved away and took a seat by the table. Starlin chuckled. I knew it! The fire orb! It must be somewhere in this territory. He opened a book and flipped through the pages without glancing at them. At last, he stopped at a page and quickly scanned the information. He looked up at Leon. Boy, um, Hunter, can I call you that? Are you up to trying to find, to have a go at finding the orb? Leon was very worn out, but he wanted to find the next orb before the priest, I'm sorry, before the prince released any other creatures upon the land. He rubbed his neck with his hand. Yes, I'll try. Starlin patted his back. Good show, lad. Come to the fire. Leon let the wizard take hold of his wrist and led him there. Hold out your hand like this and close your eyes. Leon did as he was told. 
What do you see? Concentrate, the wizard instructed. Leon let the heat of the fire absorb the warmth in his outstretched hand and arms. His In his mind, he zoomed, then halted and revealed the inside of an elaborate home. As the room began to spin, he saw a creature's head jutting out of the corner of the ceiling. He focused on the face. There, glittering back at him, were two ruby red eyes. The intensity of the building and was growing, and his eyes flashed open, and he stumbled and landed on his bottom. Starlin helped him up as Castilia brought a chair for him to sit in. What did you see? Leon took a few deep breaths before he gave his reply. I saw the inside of a home. In the corner was decorated with creature's head I've never seen before. It had the head of a dragon and the body of a lion. The creature also had two red, had two red, I assume, ruby eyes. Starlin slapped a hand on the hearth angrily. Both Leon and Castilia jumped a little. Viperlin, Starlin said with contempt in his voice. Castilia seemed uneasy by this name. How did he become head counselor? She asked in an uncertain tone of voice. How do you think? Starlin asked back, then paused while he rubbed his forehead. He wormed his way into it. Castilia closed her eyes and put a hand on her forehead. What are we going to do? It's not like we can just walk in and take the orb, Castilia said out loud. Starlin then saw Leon as if just noticing him for the first time. Hunter, tell me, do you think Castilia has a pretty face? Both Leon and Castilia gave each other quizzical glances, then looked at Starlin. Well, um... Uh, yes, she does have a pretty face, but what does that have to do with getting the orb? Star then slapped the side of Leon's face playfully. I am sure Castile can find some means of distracting him with her charms to give you time to locate the orb tomorrow, and I will be there too, so you have an extra pair of eyes. Castilia pulled a seat out and slumped in the chair and crossed her legs. She looked at Starlin and asked Riley, Don't you think Viperlin is smart enough to figure out our plan our plan out? Star shook his head no. Sometimes the simplest plans are the plans that are the most complicated, and the most complicated plans are the simplest. Castilia shrugged and still had and still had an air of doubt about the plan. Leon spied Castilia. He ventured a question. Does he always speak like that? She looked up at him. She couldn't resist uh, resist, and laughed dryly. You get used to it after a while. Starlin poured them all refreshments and offered them both a hot meal. The two companions ate hungrily. Listen, listen good, the both of you. This territory is the prince's. His soldiers come and go here all the time. You must be on guard and alert. Leon took a sip of the cold tea. I thought the people here didn't mind magic, Leon stated. The wizard began looking at another book. Yes, Hunter, that is true, but the prince has his spies all around. That way, if someone attempts to do anything against his wishes, he will know. Castilla took a swig of her tea before stating her thoughts. He's smart, I'll give him that she said in frustration. Starlin pointed to a picture in the book and held it up to show Leon. Fix your eyes on this. Have you seen this before? Leon moved so he could see the picture clear. It looks like a black stone. The wizard replied, This is not just any black stone. It is black marble. The quarry only appears every hundred years or so, then vanishes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nero has made the five clawed dragon out of it to place the orbs in. If he does, he will gain control of the elements. They rep the elements they represent. 
the black marble is a neutral force, and Nero put a black magic spell over it. Once they are in place the in the dragon's claws, the orbs won't hurt him, Starland explained. Leon slumped even further into his seat. The odds constantly seemed to be stacked against him. Great, so if he ever gets his hands on any of the orbs, the world as we know it will be lost, he said in a in defeat in a defeated melancholy way. The wizard was silent. You have to get the orbs. Leave the prince to me, Castilia said. There was a scratching on the door that distracted all of them. Starlin got up and opened the door. Would one of you please tell me why there is a water dweller on my porch? Leon smiled and headed over to the wizard's side. He's mine. He won't be trouble. May he come in? The wizard stole a glance at Castilia. She bobbed her head in approval. Yes, of course he may come in. Leon called encouragement to his pet. Come on, little boy, come. At the sound of his name, the water dweller came willingly into the home. Starlin was amazed at the sight of a young man cuddling and cooing to a good-sized reptilian creature. Once dinner was cleared up, Star explained that he didn't spend too much time at his three-story house because Nero's spies often often checked in on him and he preferred to live in a more secluded place with a simple existence. That night, both Castilia and Leon were um were offered and took hot baths and were given a soft bed to sleep in. So that is all of chapter 17 uh, today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a big like, subscribe, share with friends and family. If you are interested in reading this book on your own or along with me, you it can be found on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, Apple iBooks, and lots of other fun places. Um, if you are interested in diving even deeper into this wonderful world I've created, I have a Facebook page where you can find all sorts of unique articles on different aspects about my book, including the setting, the characters, and other things that I use to create this story. Um, thank you, like I said, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I can't wait to share with you more fun chapters and also my birthday is coming up and I'm so excited for that um, and I will see you guys tomorrow with a new chapter and like they say in my book, may the elements protect you. Bye bye for now everybody.